What's happening guys, it's Baz Nakbal for iGander.in and today we are looking at the new Motorola Moto E. Now this phone I just launched yesterday in uh, the Indian market is available uh, for a price of Rs. 6,999. That's about uh, 120 US dollars and about 89 euros uh, depending on where you are from. Now we have a couple of questions about this device that seem to be unanswered so this is going to be a quick look at that and then we're going to be checking out some gaming as well. So first of all yes we do have a front facing speaker which is over here. Uh, many of you have been asking there is no speaker phone at the back because the main speaker is this guy over here. And no we don't have stereo sound uh, just like uh, HTC boom sound uh, which would have been really nice but it's not here. This is the main speaker phone and there's also a mic somewhere beneath this grill at the bottom. So the second question has been uh, whether or not this device has a good amount of storage and if you can move applications uh, to the SD card as well. So as you can see over here I have uh, a total of 2.21 gigabyte of space available after the operating system and all of that has been installed. I have downloaded a bunch of games and then I have moved them to the SD card. Now I have a 32 gigabyte SD card in here and uh, as you can see over here if I go into applications um, I just moved Asphalt 8 uh, from the phone to the SD card and you can do that as well um, uh, with uh, many applications so I'll give you an example over here so if Subway Surfer or Subway Surf has been downloaded and uh, I just moved it back to the phone and if I want to free up some space I can move it to the SD card. So that should answer a lot of questions uh, that we've been getting about this device uh, supporting the ability to uh, move applications to the SD card. Also another question that was asked is if we can get rid of uh, the pre-installed applications like WeChat. So I'm going to give that a try right now and I'm going to get rid of uh, WeChat from uh, my device and I'm going to see if from all my applications it gets it. So as you can see WeChat has been completely removed and it should have been removed from my main apps as well. So as you can see it's gone from my main applications as well. So that is uh, I guess excellent. Now let's go ahead and jump into benchmarks. We have Quadrant Advanced over here. I'm going to jump into system information. Um, you can see that this version is the XT1022 and uh, like I said Android 4.4.2 out of the box you can see it's an ARM V7 processor 1.2 clock and 1.2 gigahertz clock and then you have two cores and uh, the Qualcomm MSM8610 Snapdragon 200 processor and then you have one gigabyte of RAM which is slightly less than one gigabyte over here if I go into the display you can see that it's a 540 by 960 pixel display some of the pixels are taken away by the buttons at the bottom so you get this number over here and you can see we have an Adreno 305 GPU. For sensors all we have is an accelerometer, a light sensor and a proximity sensor so not a lot of sensors. I'm going to run a full quadrant benchmark. As you can see over here, uh, the device scores an impressive uh, 5302 on uh, the quadrant benchmark and if I try and close up over here, you can get a look at the total results uh, for the CPU, the memory, input output, 2D and 3D graphics as well. Uh, I'm not going to run Antutu unless you guys want that so I can run that in another video. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is A, I'm going to get rid of all the running applications over here which is fairly easy. Then I'm going to simply pop into settings over here and I'm going to go into more and I'm going to show you that this device does support mobile Wi-Fi tethering or hotspots. So the next question was whether or not this device supports a Wi-Fi hotspot and it does. So it will take your 3G connection and convert it into a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, with the name of the Moto E. And uh, just see how fluid this ecosystem is. I mean, I've been using it, but it's not been uh, even 24 hours, but I feel that it's really, really fluid. First game I'm going to play is Subway Surfer. 
Now this is the Vancouver edition, so let's go ahead and play this and see what it performs like on this device. Loading up times are definitely more than other devices. So like I said, this is the speakerphone. If I, if I put my hand over it, it might end up touching the game. Um, so I can muffle the sound out. It's fairly easy. So that means that there's only one speaker. This one doesn't act as a speaker. I would say that's pretty good for a budget device. Uh, very uh, responsive on the game, uh, very responsive on the touch as well. So overall pretty happy with that. Let's see if Asphalt works after being transported to uh, the memory card. So again, load up times are definitely much more than uh, many of the other devices that we've tested Asphalt 8 on. So uh, I'm not hoping for an excellent performance, but I'm hoping that this device can actually handle something like this. So if we can actually play Asphalt 8 on this, that would be impressive. I can already see a bit of choppiness. So I guess that proves my point about the new Motorola Moto E. The device can handle gaming. The device can uh, score pretty good in benchmarks as well. Uh, it's very touch friendly and uh, even if Asphalt 8 works, it has a lot of lag in there as you guys could probably see. And it's not running on full graphics as well. Uh, but you do, do see detail, you do see a lot of smoke and you can see that actions and shadows uh, look great. And if a person can buy a device for about 6,000 rupees or uh, about $100, and can uh, do this kind of gaming on it, I, I'd say I'm impressed. So that was uh, a quick look at answering all your questions, a quick look at benchmarks, and a quick look at gaming on the new Motorola Moto E.